Good day! Today we're going to be looking at Autodesk Fusion 360. Yeah, it's a little bit different than Inventor, but it looks like this could be the future of how 3D parametric modeling is accomplished in the future. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the basics of Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, and we'll have some subsequent videos on how to create objects and so forth, but this is going to be more about the interface and some of the basic uh, features that you uh, have within the modeling tools of Autodesk Fusion. So coming from Inventor, the learning curve is not very steep. The steepest part of the curve is understanding where to select or to accomplish a specific task. The Fusion 360 uh, is kind of like a hybrid uh, between both SolidWorks and Inventor. It has some of the really good drawing ca capabilities of Inventor, has a, quite a few of the uh, visual uh, benefits of SolidWorks, and so it is kind of the best of both environments. So to get started, Uh, drawing tool. So with that being said, you have to set up an account because your projects are stored online. So you can save them locally also, but they are accessible online, which makes it very portable um, from location to location. And so ultimately, I've created Tom's first project and we had a CAM class that I attended with Autodesk and so uh, we're in the process of learning different features about the Fusion 360 and that's a good point to make. What's nice about Fusion 360 is that it has it all. It's got the 3D modeling capabilities that everybody in Inventor is used to but it has an extensive 3D surface modeling capability. Um, and being, being able to take that 3D surface model and make a solid model out of the surface model, which is fantastic. It has the sheet metal tools, has decent rendering capabilities, the animation of exploded uh, parts um, and operations is there, simulation to do stress analysis is built in, you're going to see more and more of the features of that come come through over the next several years. It has a really nice CAD and CAM interface. And so the ability to actually create uh, your G-code directly from this software is already built in, which makes it really nice. And it has the drawing capabilities uh, to create the 2D drawing environment also. So in essence, typically when you're getting started, you're going to start with a new project and then as you build components, you'll store them in that project in subfolders of that project itself. So it gives you the organizational capability of the online environment. A couple of other things I wanted to make sure that you're aware of. Basic training. These are the drawing files that go along with the help tools. And so in the help, and all I did was choose the help over on the right hand side, there is a getting started uh, and learning Fusion 360. Highly recommend it. The files are good. The tutorials um, help walk through this process uh, also. So if you have a question or an issue, uh, the help environment does provide some assistance. So how is it different from Inventor? Well, as I mentioned when we started, the interface is the biggest learning curve that I had as an Inventor professional. And so what you typically would find under Inventor sketch environment is here. Okay, It's built in. It has all the different feature capabilities that you're familiar with and comfortable with on sketching you can then use the creation tools. Um, some of the, the features that Inventor doesn't have, like the webbing uh, directly. You can do the webbing through ribs and so forth. 
uh, in an in inventor itself but there's some interesting features and a lot of familiar command structures the modify capabilities with modifying objects again a lot of familiar components that if you're an inventor user you've seen before and so parameters are the same as they are in inventor so you can build equations you can structure it like you have as a parametric modeling tool the area that I'm still learning and getting comfortable with is the assembly modeling because this is different there is a difference between the Fusion 360 assemblies and inventor assemblies so more on that later as we uh, get rolling work planes construction planes um, very similar to what you've been f uh, working with an inventor inspection tools uh, again similar to what you've uh, worked with an inventor being able to put decals on objects um, attaching canvases or providing canvases and again one of the interesting components is, is that you can also insert McMaster car components directly into the drawing environment also making this quite powerful is the ability to 3D print and as 3D printing and additive manufacturing become a standard within the industry and you're going to see more and more uh, metals based 3D printing and generative or topography surface modeling enhancements uh, going forward so 3D printing is a big part of this also so you have the ability to to launch a 3d print tool um, and work with that add-ins kinda like apps for your phone there are add-ins that are built for the software so I have not added anything in yet but you can go to the fusion 360 app store and there's both pay apps and free apps that you can use and again the selection tools which again are pretty familiar overall in terms of window and freeform selection paint selection by dragging over objects so you can select based on the object itself the view cube is in the corner and again right mouse clicking allows the same settings as inventor which makes it nice but what is different is that your viewing toolbars are now at the bottom so you can set up uh, the free orbit capabilities, the look at surfaces, panning, zooming, uh, display settings uh, in terms of the meshing environments, object visibilities, and so forth. You could also do grid and snaps and set up your grid and snap layouts. Uh, this is a la AutoCAD way, um, way back. And we could also set up multiple views and viewport uh, structure. At the bottom is what makes Fusion 360 extremely powerful. It's the ability to go back and see how you actually built the, the objects. So not only do you have the linear structure of seeing the different bodies and origins and so forth under specific components, but you can actually go back and visually see this. And you can hit the play button and follow along on how somebody actually builds a part. How fantastic is that for learning how a process is accomplished? And so I can see utilizing this in my classes to make it a much more powerful learning tool of how to properly build A single way is not always uh, the most efficient way um, but it gives the viewer the ability to literally see how the object is built step by step so a great learning capability so that's the interface some of the basic things that I wanted to show you is under the construct planes we have the ability to do axes through cylinders and so forth but I can also just right mouse click on objects and create an axis through the object itself. I can also take 
and then move, copy, and rotate these, which are which is again kind of nice to be able to do and modify. So under move, I can select what I would like to move, and in this case, I want to select the body to move. So the body, uh, the component. So I'm going to select this whole component to move. And I'm going to select the center point as my move location. And along with that, I'm able then to take and rotate around specific axes, which makes it really nice. And I have the ability to do data input at the same time. So again, similar to Inventor and some of the new features within Inventor and being able to rotate and manage the objects. And when you're finished, you can choose OK. So it's easy enough to, to reset. Now you'll notice that my actual drawing plane has changed because I now have a shadow under the original object, which I didn't before. So in essence, this object, when rotated, lowered the current plane. So again, a feature that you're not typically familiar with um, has that ability. So I said one of the things that I'm currently learning is the assemble, because the assemble is quite different. And I just wanted to do a really simple joint here. So some components have been moved, which is what we did here. Would you like to reset them in the previous position? So I can either capture the current position or reset them. Well, let's reset it to the previous position and see what happens. So if I reset it back to the previous position, I lose that move and rotate, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So in essence, I could cancel that. And so if I do the joint and it says I want to capture this current position, it updates the position of the objects. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want this edge to be located uh, on the object, and we choose OK. Again, the old position is still maintained uh, with that. So one of the things is I'm not sure if this actually fits. So what I'm going to do is put the outer object and change the, the actual appearance of the object and change it to glass. I'll we'll just do a blue glass here. And so I can then see on the inside that the bottom part of the object um, actually is OK. In essence, though, I probably have some conflict that this probably should be up a little bit higher as a position location um, overall. But it gets the point across is that there is enough space um, and I'm not conflicting against the top here so I'm able to see uh, the inside. So again, simple enough to, to make and, and accomplish. Again, view cube back into the same component and it works out really well. So what does it look like when you get started fresh? Well, I started a new document here and all I did was pick new and uh, just pick a new design. And it starts up with that new design. And it's unsaved currently. And I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch. And same scenario when you create the original sketch, just like an inventor, you have your different planar selections, X, Y, and Z. I'm going to go ahead and choose the XY plane. Now notice that it's not identified as an XY plane or a YZ plane or an XZ plane. It's identified by the three color uh, icon identifying the X, Y, and Z. X being red, Y being green, Z being blue. I'm just going to go ahead and set this. that you're familiar with and again uh, differences and designs I can start from the origin to point I can create a rectangle around it you know there's a variety of different components I can say okay this is done but now you're thinking well but he didn't put any dimensions in yeah the dimensions are actually part of the software so I can put my dimensions in it is parametric. And so it updates with the parametric dimensions. 
and now at this point I can create it. And so when I choose the create, I then can select what I would like to create. So I'm going to select just the outer edge, and then that then type in the actual distance of the object that I need. And so if I want to make this 2.50, I've now created the block at 2.50. Um, I could then put another sketch on the object again, the create a sketch. I can then put a sketch on the side of the object like we've done in the past. Um, let's say in this case, instead of a circle, I want to create a polygon, circumscribed or inscribed. So we'll create a circumscribed polygon here. We'll go uh, eight sides. Oh, we just did a like an eight inch polygon, so let's not do that. There's a one inch polygon, number of sides, eight, and we'll type in, and you can again tab between the two options, and we'll do 0.75 as a radius on this, and hit the enter key. Okay, so as we created this polygon, we notice that the polygon isn't straight. And so there's a variety of different things that we can do, but the easiest item is to come over here to the sketch palette, and then I have the ability to do um, some of the things that I need to accomplish here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick horizontal vertical and select that to be perpendicular to that surface. And so the constraints, a little bit different than an inventor, because in inventor you had a separate uh, toolbar, and you kind of do here also, but you have to be able to choose that sketch palette to make that application. And then from there, uh, we can go ahead and create it again. And this time, we're going to create this push-pull. So I can either push-pull the outer object, or I can uh, create select the inner object and push pull just the inner object and then cut that through. So again I can drag it, I can type in a distance if I'd like um, that's in the dialog and so it makes the capabilities pretty easy to be able to accomplish what I'm looking at. And again this is just a really simple um, example of what we're working with. And so, in essence, you can use the same skill sets that you've built within the Inventor environment to be used within the Fusion 360. And so, over the time here, I'm going to be creating some additional Fusion 360 videos to help with that transition between Inventor and Fusion. Uh, I hope this was a help, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day. Bye now.